everybody, and welcome to another edition of the SoCal Prep Report. Rich Estrella, along with Randy Rosenblum, Bob Gibson is en route. He's lost somewhere. We have uh, Dick Dornan tonight from the LA City section joining us. And then we're going to also talk with Chuck Price. Uh, he's a former LA City guy. Uh, has a lot of good stories. I don't know how many we're going to be able to get in tonight. It'll be an interesting interview with him. And of course, we have Sammy Doucette, the head basketball coach over at Orange Coast College. We're going to talk to her about what's going on in the junior college ranks. And especially, particularly basketball. That's her sport. And she has a very interesting story indeed. So uh, let's get on with it. Uh, Randy, let's, 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 talk to, let's talk to Dick real quick. Because Dick, uh, of course, you have a big announcement today. Uh, the state announced, kind of tipped their hat a little bit, that uh, sports might be moved, the fall sports might be moved into the, the spring, possibly, or the winter. Uh, what do you know? What can you tell us? Well, today was a very historic day for the entire uh, state of California in regards to high school athletics. Um, the state CIF office, along with the collaboration of the 10 section commissioners, uh, made the decision to uh, postpone and delay fall sports until December. Um, due to the current virus situation, which we know is uh, raging right now in California, unfortunately, uh, the decision was made to postpone, not cancel, but just postpone until December when fall sports can um, start up, hopefully, and go from then into the spring sports uh, and, and culminate in June. So basically they created two seasons of sport fall and spring, and every single sport will partake in one of those two seasons. Um, I call it, you know, hopeful optimism. Um, obviously, we have a lot of work to do as a society to get to that point, uh, but at least it gives hope to the student athletes that we hope to have a season come December. It would be the best thing for everybody. Randy, what do you have to add? Hmm. Well, it's great that we now have, you know, guidelines. We have a parameters on, on where we're going to go with this. I know for coaches, and I'm sure Sammy Doucette could speak to this, you know, you want to know when you're going to play, how you're going to map out your schedule, how you're going to get your teams prepared. Now the coaches know, at least we think we know, depending on what happens with the virus, when the games potentially are going to be played. So I think since we have this outline, I think it's a great day, provided the virus in the United States and our people here in Southern California can tamp the virus down. I think it's a terrific day because now we know where we're headed. With that in mind, Dick, how optimistic are you that we really are gonna overcome all the barriers and be prepared to have athletics go in the LA City section come January? Well, as I said earlier, hopeful optimism. Um, we have a long ways to go, obviously, uh, as a society, but at least a plan is in place uh, between now and then. And I would say, you know, a fair time would be around Thanksgiving. We would know a lot better then where we are as a society in regards to the pandemic and how that could affect high school sports. Uh, but I'm optimistic that we can get there, but ultimately we have to get the approval from the LA County Health Department to even participate in sports. And with us being part of LA County, we need LA Unified to be on board to have sports in December. If we get those two approvals, we're going for green light and let's have some fun. But if either one says no, then we don't know what the next step will be with high school athletics moving forward. Nick, I know that you're optimistic, but Chuck Price, and I know you're an outspoken guy and I I love hearing from you, and you've been around the L.A. City section for many, many years. Your dad, Ron Price, is legendary, seven decades of coaching. Are you as optimistic as Dick Dornan? Um, I'd like to say that I am because a, a school year without high school football, you know, is that proverbial year without Christmas to the high school football fan. And it just seems so odd that we'd go without high school football. Um, Back in the 70s, they instituted, I believe in the LA Unified, um, a great point average of 2.0 or better and no fails for the kids to maintain their eligibility. And the argument was always, if these kids don't have football, if they don't have sports and they don't have something positive to bring them to school, they're, they're not gonna come to school. 
Uh, I'd rather see these kids make something through sports. And I think football, in my mind, is a catalyst to, to taking these, you know, teenagers and building young men. I, I, I always remain optimistic because I know how important football is as a building block uh, in our community. Well, at the high school level, probably the, the same for us. You know, they're just they're hopeful for a season. And a lot like what Chuck and Dick were saying, we're uh, we're optimistic because we have to be. You know, I've got a lot of student athletes coming in that if it wasn't for basketball at OCC, they would go to a four year university. That's really the only reason why they're coming to OCC. Very few of my recruits coming in were already planning on coming to a junior college. So uh, I'm, like Dick said, I'm hopefully optimistic that we are shooting for that February uh, 15th start date um, or February 5th. But we're just, we have our fingers crossed. We hope that everybody does what they're supposed to do with their mask, with their quarantine. Um, we just need to be smart. And when we do get back to practice, hopefully we can do it, you know, with all the precautions that they're enforcing. And then Sammy, how, how do you recruit players during the pandemic? How did you get players to come to OCC? Uh, well, you don't. Uh, you recruit players in September, October, and November. Um, we, we were very fortunate to do a lot of our recruiting for uh, this coming year really early on. Uh, so we, we had our roster set, honestly, right around quarantine started. And, and, and to be honest with you, it, it kind of helped a lot of our recruits make their decision quickly um, because they didn't know if the four year that they maybe were thinking about going to was even going to have in-person classes. And a lot of these girls want that four year experience if they're going to go to a four year. Well, you're not going to get your four year college experience if you're taking online classes. So why not just do that 10 minutes from how your house and possibly get to play basketball? Everybody, look, it's Bob Gibson. Hey, Bob, what's hey, going on, my brother? Yeah. You showed up, man. Looking what's good, going Bobby. on? A little technical difficulties on uh, the new platform here, but but I'm in. What's up, Coach Sammy? How's it going, Bob? Hey, good to see you again. Good to see everybody. I'm in. All right, let's go. Bob will never tell you how it's going. All right, Bob, you know the casting crew. What do you got for these guys? Go ahead. Jump in. <laughs> no, I just uh, – I'm assuming you guys are talking about uh, – um, you know, kind of what's going on. And did, did you guys go over the announcement today from the Southern section? Did I miss that part? For Dick to tell us what's happening. He's holding it to the end of the show, Bob. Oh, we man. already went over that. Yeah. He already made the announcement, Bob. I, I, I thought, I'll just, I'll throw in my two cents real quick. I thought it was an interesting announcement. I thought it made sense in a lot of ways. Um, I guess in the ways that it, we're, we're going to have to see how it works out is athletic directors are going to have to, as if they didn't have enough nightmares already. Now they've got uh, tenfold nightmares trying to figure out how to uh, get court time, and field time, and, and get everybody the practice time they need and, and, and figure out a game schedule. So I, th I think that's the thing. But, I, you know, I think, I think what Southern Section laid out actually I think made a lot of sense. talked about before, and Dick, we talked about this uh, last time you were on, how it's, it's all right maybe for the big schools, but for the little schools where the talent is shared. All, you know, you've got a lot of these guys playing three sports, and they're going both ways in all three sports, you know, or whatever. So, I mean, it's clearly going to put a crunch on the small schools. It will. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, one of the goals that commissioners had was to obviously recognize every sport and give them opportunity. But they divided it up into two seasons of sport, fall and spring. So the overlap of sports wouldn't be so severe for the multi-sport athlete. And when I looked at the calendar, there are some overlaps, but maybe a week or two weeks. So I really think you will have athletes who will play, for example, you know, football and maybe join soccer two weeks later. Um, they, they're given the opportunity to these athletes that are multi-sport athletes, you know, the chance to do both sports uh, or as many sports as possible. So that's a positive. But what you said about the – with the charter schools – you're right. They share the multi-sport multi athlete. The biggest challenge for charter schools, and I talk about small charter schools, not big ones, will be facility use. So many of our schools that are charters use L.A. City Park and Rec gyms. And now trying to find time, for example, boys and girls volleyball is in the same season. 
they got to find time now to rent the gym. That will be a challenge. Chuck, I, I want to go to you next. I, I, you're a football aficionado. You work with the Wildcats and the XFL. You help out with their administration there. How do you see football being played? Is it going to be a different face mask? How do you safeguard the players at any level? You know, in football, they probably have got a better chance to social distance, so to speak, in terms of the airborne germs that come out of the mouth. They've been using shields and visors for over a decade. Um, they'll create a better type of a mouthpiece. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I just feel like with the, the sheer hand-to-hand -hand combat of high school football, the bigger issue is always going to be what happens in the locker room, at timeouts, when people have their helmets off, when there's a lot of dialogue going on and the kids don't have their helmets on. And, you know, the coaches can't wear the mask because you just can't hear. You can't hear when the guy's two feet in front of you without a band. There's no way you're going to hear it at a high school football game. And, you know, the louder you get, apparently, the more germs you're going to spray. And I think that's probably the craziest part for the football team. I don't think the combat, I don't think the – the face guards, the, the mouthpieces. I don't think any of that's going to be the problem. I think it's going to be what happens when the helmets are off, you're in the heat of competition, and all of a sudden social distancing rules don't apply and you don't have a mask on that we've been wearing every day. But, you know, once again, I think we're basketball where they have no helmets and face guards and soccer where they're face-to-face -face without a shield. They might have greater challenges than football. Not about it. Interesting. I didn't think about face masks, you know, with the visor. I didn't even think about um, the high school athletes wearing those. But it's it's just going to be an interesting um, mess going forward in that regard. Um, so, uh, Bob, any more questions right now before we move on to the next in terms of this? Because you came in late. I'm giving you a shot. One more. I, I just, you know, I, I kind of want to ask Sammy kind of ba based on that, too. Um, you know, what, what are you doing to try to socially distance kids on a basketball I mean how can you even what have the discussions been about how to how to accomplish that in a practice setting much less in a game setting yeah no that's a great question so what we're trying to do is implement you know lots of sanitation during water breaks when we first have our face-to-face -face practices we're going to try to keep it strictly individual work everybody at their own basket uh, we do have a COVID-19 budget, if you will, and we're trying to get ball cleaning machines, uh, a Roomba. Uh, if, if you don't know what that is, it's basically like, you know, a, a robot mop, so to speak, that cleans the, the gym, um, things like that. That's what we're talking about doing. But right now, it's just strictly what we're doing right now, you know, online. Dick, um, losing football season this year, it possibly, I'm talking a full season. I don't know how long they're going to let the um, the LA City section guys play. Revenue-wise, man, is that going to kill any programs, do you think? How bad is this going to get in those terms? Because the money does, well, it does all, help. Well, only get bad if the season's canceled. Um, right now, we have set up the schedule throughout the state for 10 games for regular season and full playoffs. So if Let's just say a vaccine came in November and everything went through. In theory, we could play a full football season, uh, 10 games, playoffs, state bowl games. That's the plan right now. But if we were to cancel the fall season, which, again, that won't be decided until probably you know Thanksgiving, whether the fall season does occur, yes, it'd be devastating for schools. It'd be devastating for our office. It'd be devastating for the state office because football is a major revenue machine for all parties. So we got to hope and pray that we can get a football hey, Dick, season. I'm out. looking at, at your calendar, and what strikes me is you have wrestling and basketball going as far into the calendar year as June. Why would you put those sports later in the season? Well, Randy, one of the things that the commissioners did – was go through each sport and identify it as either low risk, medium risk, or high risk based upon the health guidelines and what we know. 
basketball and wrestling are the two highest risk sports, actually more so than football, because literally it is body to body contact. Football's right there with them too, don't get me wrong. But because it's indoor, basketball and wrestling are high risk indoor sport. The virus really thrives. And so the state office and the commissioners felt it's best if they prolong those two sports as much as they can because they're high risk and to allow boys and girls volleyball to coexist and have their own gym time. Then you transition into basketball and wrestling. So that's why when you look at the calendar, you notice that wrestling championships are the first week of June and the basketball championships are the second week of June, which has been unheard of, but that's because they are high risk sports and everyone's very cautious right now. Does anyone think any of these changes could be permanent? Is there anyone looking at this and going, hmm, maybe that's not such a bad thing uh, going forward? Bob, what do you got to say well, like that? The two great, <laughs> yeah, the two great words that we're using is our sports calendar is a living document. Mm -hmm. That means it could it's subject to change at any time pending this pandemic. So, uh, I mean, literally, it could change on the fly if anything moves forward from the state office that we need to change playoff date delete part of the football regular season. There's things, so th it's not permanent dates. They're hopeful dates, but they are definitely subject to change based upon this pandemic. I know you're dead, and I alluded to him earlier, Ron Price is headed into his seventh decade. He's an offensive line coach currently at Fairfax. He's not a young wow. man. Does he have any trepidation about going back to the sidelines once they restart? Zero. He's he's dying to get out. Uh, most football people are. Uh, he'll be 84 in November, so he's a guy who, you know, uh, by everything you hear, is at high risk. Um, so, you know, I know that uh, if they start to say well, there's going to be barriers for people to be involved based on uh, disposed illnesses or possibly asthma or or you know where they're at in their age bracket. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't think he's got one one fear. Uh, he fears the next day because that's another day he's he's not out coaching. You know, that's that's what he lives for. And you know, with a mask on, he could get out there every day and, and make a difference in a lot of these players' lives. You know, once again, you know, this was going to be the greatest high school football season for the city because for the first time in ten years, there was actually some some thrill in it. Somebody could win a championship other than you know, Narbon was about to move to the Trinity League, but we got rid of him the other way. So, anyways. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> kind of another way. Nice take, <laughs> Chuck. I like that. You know, sorry. You know, I had to take the filter off of it. And we're getting back to some of those. Sammy, I wanted to ask you, you know, I, I was reading some stuff about you. So, tell us about your Kobe Bryant connection. Um, well, yeah, I did. Uh, I started working with him in the summer of 2017, and we were connected because um, basically, you know, I, I know more about it once I was brought in than before I was brought in. But essentially, he started a club team with another Newport Beach dad, and these girls were at, in fifth grade at the time, and he realized you know, we need a female on board because we're two grown men coaching a bunch of little fifth grade girls. We need to bring some female influence in. So they reached out to Russ Davis uh, at Vanguard, who was my college coach and great guy to reach out to. He's, you know, at the time ESPN had voted him like the number one club coach in the country. If it wasn't that year, it was a recent year and so he recommended me you know they wanted someone who was a former college player and who had hopes to be a, a college coach and uh, then two days later I'm in the gym with Kobe Bryant and it was an awesome experience how much in awe were you I don't think I learned anything from him the first month because um, I was just starstruck the whole time Right. You know, I can't, I couldn't tell you what he said. I was just like, like at everything. Yeah. 
Um, but no, I mean, it was a great experience. I mean, I was literally seeing this guy five days a week, two days, uh, two times a day. It, it was unbelievable. Um, but no, he was at, at a certain point, I was I always had a notepad out and I was writing down everything this guy said, you know, recording things just for things to take away from my team and also things I can show my kids one day, you know. Mentality, you were around him. From what you witnessed, what is that mentality? Well, it's probably redundant at this point what I'm going to say, because, you know, it, it's always what we hear when we, when we talk about Kobe, but he really was so detail oriented in every, everything he did, uh, extremely intentional. Um, you know, where these girls are in fifth, sixth grade. And, you know, when game time started, you couldn't make a joke with him. You couldn't be like, you know, oh, I hope you're ready coach, because he would just look at you like, shut up. Like we have a game to get to. And like, it's like, dude, we're NJB fifth grade. These girls are just learning how to dribble. But um, no, I mean, he, he was just, like I said, intentional, very, very detail oriented, um, a really cool guy. I mean, it was, yeah, he's great. Well, it you, brought like up, he was, uh, you brought up your college know. coach. Uh, I was going to say, Sam, you brought up your college coach, Russ Davis, who I know very well, uh, as well covered him uh, back through his high school coaching days. You, you got a chance to learn from, obviously one of the legends in Russ Davis, and then you learn from a legend in, in Kobe Bryant. I mean, that's, that's pretty fortunate for you as a coach now to be able to learn from those two. Absolutely. I mean, 90% of what I do with my team, uh, actually, I don't want to give Coach Russ that much credit, but a very high percentage <laughs> um, is things that I took away from my time at Vanguard. You know, Coach Russ, he's a lot like Kobe in that he's intentional. He's very big on relationships, everything he does, there's a purpose behind it. Um, and then, you know, they have certain expectations with their team, with the players. And if you don't meet those expectations, you fall in line. I mean, even with Kobe's team, we had girls come and then if they didn't fall, you know, if they fell out of line, then they didn't make it. Hey, Chuck, I know the XFL season got suspended and you're with the Wildcats and hopefully it'll come back. That leads me to this question. Are you going to come back? Will there be a Vince McMahon XFL down the road? Well, first I have to go back to Sammy because now I'm thinking that we might have had about a 15-second phone conversation when I worked at when I worked at Mamba Sports Academy as the director of football. And I know that we are looking to get some facilities at Orange Coast College. And you said, well, I'm going to talk to Kobe directly because I know who he is. But anyways, it's good to meet on, on the show. Uh, now, Chuck. There it is. So um, <laughs> the XFL is coming back. Um, that's, that's my opinion. Um, but for all the reasons that I thought it was off to a very successful start, uh, the enthusiasm, the quality of play, the attendance, achieving uh, achieving the objectives that the league set out to do, fan engagement, um, and and viewership on TV, uh, new new aspects of the game, which actually made it significantly safer, and things that made it more enjoyable to watch in person and on TV. Um, had it not been for COVID, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that the league and the initial season inaugural season would have been looked at as a as a huge success uh, from the inside of the Wildcats from before we even had a draft pick to where our season ended uh, at after five games it was it was just an unbelievable bucket list football experience and everybody who helped build this thing from scratch across the league uh, they felt the same way um, it was it was bad and sad that COVID came along for you know, millions and millions of people, but uh, the people in the league were saddened because it was so much fun working at it. So I say it's coming back. Why is it, why is it going to work this time where it didn't work the last time they brought it, brought it in? Uh, What's last different? time meaning 20 years ago or this past? Well, right. The, the first, the first, the first uh, time we saw the XFL came in, the success that it can be what what's different about it why why is it going to be a success this time where it wasn't the, the first go around not necessarily designed to compete with the nfl and to find a 
a, a base of football fans that want to watch in the spring. Um, 38 players on eight teams signed with NFL teams. The innovations to the game, the speed of the game, and the type of players that we were attracting. I mean, we had really, really good quarterbacks on each team, guys that were successful in the NFL. And then we had tremendous athletes that I would just call bubble football players uh, in the right system with the right breaks. They make an NFL team. But things don't work that way when you're talking about only 1,500 uh, jobs that you can have in the NFL. So these are the guys that are good enough to be in the NFL. They just need a break. Something happened. They they ended up at the wrong team. Uh, coaches across the board in this league are, are all guys that could be on NFL sideline. Many of them have. They relate to the players. Uh, watched all the games this year. Very, very rarely did you see personal fouls, cheap shots. People were in this for the love of the game. And I think our players really engage with our fans and, and vice versa. I think that's why it, it would stick. The blue collar fan, the blue collar player. That's good stuff, Chuck. So that leads me to, to Dick Dornan talking about schedules. We know that potentially the XFL is going to come back. When do you, Dick, foresee that we'll have on paper potential games, real games? We know the parameters, when they're going to play on the calendar. But when are we going to see actually A against B, Fairfax against Crenshaw? When will we know games are actually going to be played? Well, Randy, as we speak I, I, on social media, football is going crazy right now. It's trying to schedule head-to-head -head games. I mean, it's great. They're very proactive today. I need a three game. What do you need? Uh, I think football will be the first sport that will have their games lined up because it's, it's 10 games. And most schools are looking for three to five non-league games. And then the rest of the schedule is league. The other sports can still take time. So we have a league commissioners meeting coming up soon. And the league commissioners will create the league schedule. And then the schools can individually work around that with tournaments and non-league contests. So yeah, I would think maybe maybe by Labor Day around then, we should have an idea of what schedules might look like into the fall. I think we got to give them all of August to put together schedules, knowing the lack of facilities, knowing schools might drop out of certain programs or drop certain levels because everything's being scrunched together from December to June. So, and with fall being December to February, um, you know, maybe by September we'll have an idea. October we'll definitely have schedules done. Uh, then it's just a matter of do they come to fruition in, in, in December, January. Hopeful now that Major League Baseball starting up, that if that's successful, things just might get back to normal. Anybody? Not really. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, is this, it's not but, even a normal baseball season. It's, it's – I think it's a sham of a baseball season. 60 games for baseball? That's, you, can't, you can't do anything with that. Well, yeah. you, you know, I mean, Bob, I disagreed with you on that take because I like the fact that it's a sprint. But I don't think you can compare the pros to high school and college. It's just a different scenario. They have the ability to get tested. They have, you know, you know, a bubble that they can create. We can't do that at the high school or at the junior college level. We have to play it as it lies. It's a much easier situation for the pros. Not that it's easy, but it's more viable for the professionals to get it done. They have all the resources to work with. Anybody hey, Sam, I want to ask I agree. You, uh, I'll ask Sam real quick, as, as, as the newer coach there in, in, in the Orange Empire Conference, um, have you had a chance to talk to your other fellow coaches in the conference and, and kind of pick their brains and get their thoughts on, on what, uh, what they're doing as well with, with their team? How, how well do you know the other coaches in the conference right now? Uh, yeah, no, I actually know some of them quite well because some of them actually recruited me when I was at Woodbridge. So um, we do have some sort of relationship. Uh, no, one idea in particular that I got was my team's actually going to do it this week is we are going to do a virtual viewing party of a basketball documentary. And we have a week to watch it on our own time. And then next week we'll use one of our Zoom or practice sessions, if you will, to discuss it. And I think that's something that's that's very unique that I took away from one of my uh, enemies, if you will. <laughs> hey, Dick, I, I want to 
the summertime rules. I know the LA city section is going to have summer rules. I think the CIF Southern section as well. Explain to the general public what summer rules means. Sure. Well, I, as I mentioned, today is a good day because we presented a sports calendar to our member schools to plan ahead. And they got plenty of time now, four or five months to get ready. But two big uh, waivers were installed by the state CIF office with collaboration of the 10 commissioners. The first one is the summertime rules, which means they now extend between today and the first date of contest, which is December 14th, meaning once the LA County Health Department gives permission for high school athletics to uh, participate in any manner during the uh, upcoming months, it will be a school site decision if they grant their team's permission to condition to ultimately play in a contest or practice. Um, so again, because we, the CIF, don't govern during the summertime, we're granting them the opportunity to do whatever they got to do between now and December. So for example, football might have a seven on seven tournament in October. Every Saturday, you might have a basketball tournament in what would be a fall league, for example, but it would be under the auspice of the school site's principal's discretion, whether or not it's yes or no, probably based upon the county health guidelines. So that's the first, that allows athletes to remain active prior to the uh, you know, our, our beginning of our CIF fall season. Second thing is, and this was big news, and as Eric Sonheimer said, unprecedented, uh, the state office waived bylaws 600 through 605, meaning we abolished outside competition for one week, for one year, meaning a student athlete can play club and his or her high school sport at the same time. In the past, that was against CIF rules. So, for example, girls volleyball, we know January and February are important times for, for club volleyball. A girl could play club volleyball and high school volleyball, same time. Uh, we want to give these as much of an opportunity to enjoy their high school and club experience with athletics to, given this pandemic. So very historic decision. It might create headaches for coaches to compete for athletes, you know, if an athlete chooses club over high school or vice versa, or they split time. But I think it's in the best interest of the average forward. That's assuming clubs are going to be back too, right? Back in business. Well, let's put it this way. You know, there's been a lot of club ball going on over the summer. Right. Uh, some call it some call it rogue that they're out there doing things without abiding by any health guidelines. Um, LA Unified, as you know, shut down all facilities during the summer. No contact players and coaches. Yet there's club softball, there's club volleyball. I mean, 9,000 players going to Orlando, Florida for a tournament. Uh, I don't think there's social distancing there, you know. So um, club is separate from us. We just got to hope that club, AAU, high school can all work together emphasizing the health guidelines so we can all return to sports in an effective and safe way. Absolutely. All right. Hey, yeah. anybody surprised today that Antonio Brown retired? I just got to throw that in because that's been such a, a drama last season. Come on. For how, for how long? Retired? Ten minutes? I don't Come know. on. I don't he know. is retired. He, he was retired last year anyway. He never got on the field. Maybe <laughs> well, that's not what he said. Chuck Price. Chuck, he made the right choice, did he, not to get out? Nobody really wants him, do they? Yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty sticky climate right now. I think these owners have their – their plates full with getting uh, getting their players back to camp and back into football. Uh, this was probably a tough year for him to try and find his way back onto a roster. Um, so agreed, he made the right decision. He's no spring chicken. Ball and clearly in a in a condensed period of time, uh, I don't think the drama or the potential distraction is worth the worth uh, the risk. Or the reward. I think he can still play. 
<laughs> for who, Bob? Who's taking? You gonna, you gonna pay him? Well, no one's gonna take. No, you're right. No, he can play. That doesn't mean anyone's gonna take a chance on him. But hey, the Wild Cats might take a chance on him. I'm oh, sure he can still play. Go. I knew it was coming, Chuck. Randy couldn't resist himself. I couldn't resist. Him. <laughs> yeah, we'll you know. take him. Uh, in basketball, let's go to Sammy now. Sammy, NBA. They're planning on having their season. What it starts Friday, I believe, or something like that. What do you think? Mm-hmm about what they're going to do in the NBA as far as, you know, how they're going to complete their season. The restart. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm a diehard Laker fan, so I'm ready to see some NBA basketball. Uh, I, I don't know what to think about how they're going about this whole bubble and, and things like that. I, I hope that they just do a really good job making sure that those guys are following the rules and, you know, I, I sat in on a, a Zoom actually yesterday with uh, an assistant. He um, assistant for the Brooklyn Nets, and he was saying, you know, that he's heard some rumors about videos and things like that. And these guys are all together, and who knows, sneaking off or whatever. But uh, I just hope that they're they're doing everything right. That's, I mean, that's really all I could say because I want to see them play, and I want to see LA get another championship, even if it is in this strange setting. Earned it. They had earned the right to at least the season that stopped there, at least to be in the playoffs, which would give them a shot. Mm-hmm. And not to mention they were one of the favorites to actually be in the finals. So um, it's not far fetched that they could possibly get back. I don't know. You hear so much right now, you don't know what to believe. Who's going to come and who's who's not? We hear Rich that LeBron is in the best shape of his career or close to it. That he's just chiseled and ready to go. And there are a lot of people that believe that LeBron James will shoulder the burden. He always seems to do that in the playoffs anyway and take the Lakers all the way. I personally think he's going to need great assistance from Anthony Davis and from his shooters on the perimeter. But we're hearing that LeBron's in just peak physical condition. Well, just like baseball, it's going to be kind of a sprint. I want to ask our three guests, injuries. What do you think? How will these affect this? Do you think more guys are going to get injured because everything's going to be truncated and fast-paced? Across the board. I think so, Chuck? I think, yeah, I think in every sport, at every level, the lack of an off-season training regimen is, you know, unfortunately going to catch up with the kids, the collegiates, uh, the pros. Um it, it takes a lot to get the body into the shape to perform at the level that it does. And without that constant off-season program and the escalation from the end of one season to the start of the other, it's difficult. It's going to be very challenging to keep the group healthy. Uh, I think the per-game injury rate is going to skyrocket uh, at all levels, unfortunately. What do you think, Dick? Uh, I agree. It, it will be a concern uh, because everything is condensed into, you know, six months, especially if athletes play club and high school, they're going to be overtaxing their body. That's their, that's each individual to sit. In. You know, and from, from our perspective with LA Unified, we only have, I believe, eight member schools that have an athletic certified trainer. So when the injuries occur, that's an issue because eight, school, eight schools are hands-on that can take care of those athletes. But Everybody else is fending for themselves, and uh, that that's a concern moving forward. And, uh, you know, hopefully it won't be that significant of injuries over time. Uh, that's that's obviously one area. And obviously officials, trying to find enough officials to oh. officiate all these sports. Between, oh. Yeah, between not only our section, think about this, the southern section and the city section. A lot of officials cross over, and – and do multiple wow. sports. So, you know what? We're all going to sacrifice and be flexible in moving forward. But ultimately, it's about the student athletes, and we hope that injuries won't play a factor. But let's give them the opportunity to compete again. They need it. Sammy, what's your concern with your teams and, and women's basketball in general? Um, right now, my number one concern is just being able to practice with them face to face, you know, and, and give them that experience that they really came to OCC for. Um, they, they didn't sign up for virtual practices and talking through their teammates or their coaches through a computer screen. So I'm hoping that we just are able to give them a season. On the flip side of injuries, I'm hopeful that 
you know, we can't do all of the practicing that we could have before because now basketball isn't a winter sport. So when winter break comes, they're going to have that entire month off because we can't officially start practicing now until I want to say January 18th. So that means they're going to have time off. So they're not going to be burnt out. Their bodies aren't going to be dying. There's not going to be a strenuous preseason. But then just like, uh, you know, Chuck was saying and Dick were saying that they do need to have that sort of training so that they're prepared for a season. But I mean, it's, it goes both ways. It's, it's, you always get burnout at the end of the season. If you're one of those players that plays a lot of minutes. So it could be an opportunity to be easier on their bodies, I suppose. Hey, do, you, do you see that uh, the schedule in football, not just Friday nights, just to elongate things and maybe have games on Saturday? I know you can't play on Sunday. Maybe a Monday afternoon game to give the schools an opportunity to spread the wealth around and to give the officials an opportunity to have other days to work. Do you see that as an option? I do. Uh, that would be a big topic for our sport advisory for football to look at potentially maybe playing on a Thursday instead of a Friday, a Saturday at one o'clock. I, I wouldn't say Monday because that's usually only, only in case of emergency, like we've had in the past few years, a fire or something has pushed it to Monday. Because playing a Monday, Friday, two games in one week is not healthy for players at the, at the high school level. But I could see a Thursday, Saturday, but we will need the cooperation with LAUSD in regards to busing, for example. Um, the, to use the facility on a Saturday. Um, there'll be a lot of things we'll have to work out with LAUSD to make it happen. I'm sure that will be discussed in order to get the officials there. Plus playing on a Friday night in January and February is gonna be cold. And uh, I know we're not the Midwest, but it still gets chilly out here. And they might wanna move the game to one o'clock on a Saturday, potentially. But I think it'll be up to the two schools that are scheduled to play to make that happen. Interesting. You didn't think about a lot of those things like the officials, you know, and they do cross over. I know quite a few officials and it, yeah, they'll cross over. They'll do basketball, football, you know, they'll, they'll help out with track and field. Some of them will umpire. I mean, it, it, Dick, I'm sure you've been in that situation. Now, our tab is on over in the Southern section area. He, he umpires and, and officiates everything under the sun. So um, there's going to be a lot of scheduling issues. I could see it coming now because, even when they're at full strength and the, and, and the seasons are normal where you have fall sports, you know, winter sports and spring sports, they still have somewhat of a shortage of officials. So this is going to be very interesting how this is managed. It's going to take some thought. Very much so. Dick, you're going to earn yeah. your money this year, my friend. Hey, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But I'll tell you, Before we let Chuck go, I'll tell you one okay, thing. Okay, Dick, you finish. I got a great thought for Chuck, but let's go to Dick. Go ahead, Dick. No, I was just going to say, when you look at the calendar, January through June, it's going to be the craziest of times. But in my humble opinion, it'll be the best of times because we're back. We're playing athletics. And that's what we're here for is to be here for the school student athlete. And I love going to contests and supporting our schools. I can't wait to get back on the sidelines and courts. Chuck, uh, Patrick Mahomes just signed a $500 million 10-year contract. And I know you've been a sports agent in the past. I know you didn't make that deal. That was Lee Steinberg's deal. But your thoughts on where that takes us for not only quarterbacks, but for salaries going forward to the National Football League? Into a stratosphere of a lot of cash. Um, I, unfortunately, I think that he's going he's gonna to set a bar that, you know, in terms of this, the sheer value of that deal might be hard to catch for a while because, you know, the owners, the salary cap, everything's hurting right now. So I think there's going to be a dip over the next couple of years. Uh, there's going to be some quarterbacks who do outlandishly crazy deals. I'm not sure about $500 million, but every individual guy can put a value on where he wants to be, how long he wants to be there the value of cash in the immediate future versus long-term security. And, you know, every player is different and every team is different. Um, there's not going to be a lot of deals like that in the next half dozen years. There will be a handful, but uh, those are going to be, you know, earmarked for the, the guys who transcend the game. And, 
uh, eventually most of those guys will have been taken care of. And the NFL looks like it's a collection of haves and have nots. You got, you know, guys that have more money than they know what to do with and, and guys that get paid game to game and they need that check. So um, interesting times ahead for the collective bargaining agreement for sure. Hundred million though, wouldn't you, Chuck? No chance. Huh. Lee, Lee Steinberg, who happens to be a Hamilton high grad. He is. Is always 15 years ahead of the game. He's got a peculiar way of showing it and 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 then selling it to people. And you know, but there's nobody with a greater understanding of of, of the value of the quarterback. Lee could he could put 30 books together on it, not just because he went to Hamilton, although that does make him a little bit more gifted than than the North Hollywood Husky guys, but hey, you know, oh. 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 Randy took a shot at him. Oh. 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 Randy, I, I bit my hey, that, tongue for an hour and a half, and I, I'm sorry to have come to you. <laughs> you don't deserve that. Hey, I'll, 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 I'm okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he hey, does. The Husky, it takes me to a question. It takes me to a question, my, question yeah. I wanted to ask Coach Stanley. Well, so I want to ask Sammy really quick. You know, uh, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, the health of women's basketball. We've, ne- you know, the women's basketball. I think it was really coming into to having its day. We've never seen the array of athletes that we've seen um, on all levels, but but especially in the on the professional level, the WNBA. Um, a lot of people kind of felt with the death of Kobe Bryant that that push that maybe he would have given women's basketball has kind of been pushed to the side. Do you kind of feel that way, A, and B, do you feel like there's a chance for someone else to come maybe fill that void and, and, and really make that push? So do people see women's basketball for, for, for the, the great product that, that it is and has become? Absolutely. I, I definitely feel that way. I I feel like not only with that, but of course, you know, with COVID-19, everything is pushed to the side, right? But I think it's an opportunity for everyone to rally around women's basketball. You know, um, that whole hashtag girl dad thing that was started, I think is awesome. I think that I have seen a lot more men, uh, a lot, a lot of men be more supportive of the WNBA and women's sports. And there's a lot of, you know, comments on ESPN's posts and things like that about women needing to get back into the kitchen or make me a sandwich. But I see men responding to those comments and basically shutting them down. And that's not really stuff that you saw before. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that that's because of Kobe Bryant, but I, I, we all know that he played a huge hand in supporting women's basketball. So, I mean, it very well could be, but regardless, I'm very happy to see that kind of stuff. Do you feel like it's? Do you feel like things are trending in 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 the right direction for for women's hoops and women's sports? And you're a basketball coach, obviously. You see it from a basketball standpoint. Absolutely. I mean, the WNBA gets better and better every single year. There's just these amazing female athletes that join the league. Um, I hear rumors about young girls being, you know, more attracted to volleyball, but. I'm still seeing WNBA numbers and ratings go up, their salaries gone up. I mean, so I don't necessarily know if I think that young girls are flocking to soccer and volleyball. I think they're just flocking to all three sports. But yeah, I mean, the WNBA is is going to be just I can't it starts on my birthday actually, which is this Saturday. So I can't wait to see Sabrina go to work for the New York Liberty. All right, let me ask Chuck because we're going to start wrapping up, and I'm going to ask you all pretty much the well, same Happy question. early birthday. Thank you. Chuck, looking into your crystal ball, looking ahead, <laughs> what, let's just take a look at the high school sports season. Where do you think we are in June? Do you think we're going to finish out possibly the way things are, the way they've been kind of mapped out by the sections? Do you think we'll – Yeah, I think, I think the people that – the people that care the most seem to really look at this as a glass half full situation. And if we continue to stay positive, I think we could will our way back towards normal. Um, and I think that would require giving it a shot and, and really making sure we can protect our kids and our coaches. And if we can do that, um, I think we can, you know, slowly crawl back to normal and, 
you know, I think the first sports that are supposed to go in December are the ones that are at the highest risk not to happen. We might not know quite enough. We might be in the middle of a pandemic still, but I think if we give it a shot, if we look at that, that glass is half full, uh, we will get through it. The sports that come after football will learn a little bit from it, and, and that's the role. These high school football coaches and kids would be happier playing three games than none. So, you know, roll those dice. What do you think about um, all, the, all the mandates that are in place? you think it'll be enough to get through the seasons for everybody? You know, I have to think it will be. Uh, just like Chuck was saying, we've got to be optimistic. We've got to be positive. We've got to do everything that we're told. So, yeah, I'm going to say that same thing that I'm telling my team. You know, this is the date that they're telling us that we could have our first game. So let's shoot for that being the day that we go. And, and yeah, I mean, just we got to be positive And like I keep saying, do everything that they're telling us to do. Because I, I see a season happening. and speak it into existence right absolutely and let's let us all talk yeah. that way <laughs> dick you're the last one we held on to this because you're closest to all of this you know you're the one that's going to have to you know uh administrate the marching orders from the district what do you think how do you think this will play out come june well at this point it's to me it's one day at a time the calendar set for all 10 uh the state cf has given their calendar um let's all be optimistic we can achieve this but i'll be honest i mean from the person who was raised in an educational background we need our students to return to a school setting at some point soon because education is everything in this world before athletics and we got to hope that our our student athletes in school maybe by labor day maybe by october 1st in an, an instructional forum where they can learn every day, and then we can hope and pray. Together. Like it or not, we're in it together. Randy, give you a last minute, then Bob, and then we got to sign off, guys. Well, I, you know, we can talk about all the student athletes and the coaches, but it's really, in my mind, they're going to do their part. I'm pleading with the general public. Everybody's got to wear the mask when they're outside. They have to social distance. It's not about the people we've been talking about on this show. I believe in the athletes in the Los Angeles City section and the athletes that are at Orange Coast College. I'm more concerned about the general public. We can't get lazy. We have to tamp this disease down. Socially, please distance. Be careful if everyone does their job, and I mean everyone in society in Southern California, then we'll be playing athletics at the end of the year and we'll all be better for it. Wake up. <laughs> uh, real quick, I just want you know, we've been talking about it for weeks. Sports is the tonic, or part of the tonic we need to, to heal what's, uh, what's going on in our nation right now. You know, uh, so many different uh, places where we're divided but we can all come together when it comes to sports, right? Everybody's a fan of a team. Everybody's got somebody that they're, they want to root for. And we all come together and we all love to, to cheer and boo for our favorite and our least favorite teams. And that's what makes sports so much fun. So um, I think sports, when we get back to it, when it's in full force again, is going to go a long way in helping to, uh, to heal uh, what's been going on in our world. So many different things uh, in these last couple of months. I agree, Bob. I think that, you know, you can look at this a lot of ways. We need sports to come back, similar to after 9-11 when I believe it was at the Yankees or the Mets played, the, you know, the first game after, the, you know, they canceled a lot of games. And then, you know, they played that first game and the place was packed. Everybody was watching on TV and, and the healing process started. So hopefully all this stuff will come to pass now. Um, hopefully this will be the final decree. Dick, you won't have to do any more work after this. Just follow what you guys put together. And we have our seasons and we have our championships. Everybody, uh, you know, Chuck, I'd like to thank you for coming, Dick. And, of course, Sammy, thank you guys for coming out and joining us. We appreciate your time and your insights into what's going on, man. This is, this is unprecedented. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. On behalf of our guests and on behalf of Randy Rosenblum, Bob Gibson, I'm Richard Stray. Yep. saying thank you and so long from your friends here at the Silk Out Forever. Forum.